Like when I speak to a, a client, a potential buyer, I can have you pre-approved and we can go shopping tomorrow. Right? Like that's it. Like yeah. there's no like, oh, well, um, you, uh, no. it's, by it's, that you're it's, done. As soon as they hear the mm and the ah, uh, like, and the hesitation, they're like, you're not the guy I want to work with. Welcome to the Realtor-ish Podcast. I'm your host, Juliana Gainsburg. This podcast is all about helping entrepreneurs grow their business through real estate and business development strategies. In each episode, my guests and I will chat about the real when it comes to real estate. If you like what you hear, follow us on your favorite streaming platform. Welcome back to the podcast. If you don't know who I am, my name is Juliana Gainsburg, and this is my show, but I also bring on amazing people, funny, cool from the industry, from not from the industry. And today I have the one and only John Nolano with me. Thank yay, you. Yay. Um, John. You sound like an audience. Like, ah, yeah, John Nolano, yeah. No, no um, sound effects? Damn you. No, we're not there yet. <laughs> um, tell me, give me the rundown who you are before we get into talking it up. People need to know. What, uh, what's, give me the hot sheet. Give me the one-liners, all of it. The one-liner? Well, give me more than the one-liner. Okay, so a little bit about myself. I am originally born and raised in South Philadelphia. I moved around a little bit, but I always had my base in Philadelphia. I came from the hospitality industry. I Same. started, yeah, 1998. I opened up my first coffee shop in Old City. We like to joke and say we were in Old City before it was old. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's not the case. It's always been old. And uh, it was called Cafe Pazzo. Okay. Me and my cousin had a little stint there for three years. Successful coffee coffee shop. We ended up selling it. I parlayed into an Italian restaurant, which wasn't a great fit. And then I had two successful bars in Old City with four other partners, uh, St. Jack's and Mint. Okay. And I don't know if you know where Plow on the Stars is, mm -hmm. but it's right across there. It used to be the old Billy Wong's. And then St. Jack's, we turned into Jaegers, which, again, you know, this was way before the crash. Everybody was just, they were just throwing money out. They were like, hey, what's up? Yeah. Let's turn money. I just dropped 100. No, 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 it's fine. It's good. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, in 2005, um, I, I decided to get my, my uh, real estate license. So this is kind of like a second career for me. Yeah. But it was a cross between what I loved to do, you know, dealing with people and then problem solving, helping people, you know, like, yeah. so I was like, Hey, this is a good mix for me. And I got to meet my, make my own schedule. Yeah. You know, uh, the, there's like a ton of, for me, I came from a waitress before I was in real estate Oh yeah. and all the other, like a bunch of other things, everything, but being an owner and a manager. Um, but there are a ton of things I learned from that industry that makes me a good agent oh, today, yeah. for sure. I, I mean, it makes you a good judge of character. You know, like, you, you know the kind of person, I mean, I like, you know, like, to say that as soon as they start talking, their body language, right, right, it gives you that innate ability to, like, you're like, oh, man, I was like, I know exactly what I'm, t I, I know exactly how to act with this person. Yeah. Like, no, 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 it's going to be fine. It's going to be okay. Well, it's like, like a tonality thing, too. Yeah, and like, a, just a vibe, like, if. Right. Someone's like, yeah, hey, I want to sell my house. I'll be like, all right, let's sell it. <laughs> <laughs> or if they're like. Let me get the wings. Yeah, I'm like, what What flavor? <laughs> like, or if they're like, yeah, I'm like, not really sure what I want to do. Uh, All right, well, you know, we can sit and talk about it. We can wait you a month. Get the notepad out yeah, and yeah. become the therapist. Well, wait, do you. Well, tell me why you do, don't want to sell right now. Do you use the, um, have you ever taken or used the DISC test? I, I'm not even familiar. Wow, okay. The DISC I can't test? even believe you're on this podcast. You're like, <laughs> not to be here anymore. I should make that a requirement that any, put that in the notes. Anybody that comes on this has to take the DISC test first. Is it called the DIST? <laughs> D-I-S-C. DISC. No, don't. So back in the day, and by back in the day, I mean just about like three years ago, Keller Williams used to use the DISC test when you would get into the business as like a personality business assessment. Now we use the KPA everything's like calorized. But basically there's like four quadrants and like you're a D and I and S or a C mm -hmm. and disc I, bare like surface level of it is like D is like you, let's say you go to the doctor's office and they give you a form to fill out. And before the doctor is even done explaining what the form means, you're already filling it. You're already like halfway down it. Gotcha. Like you like quick, like you need in the information right away. You don't need all the like, 
fluff. Just like tell me what I need to do. You don't need the instructions. No, a lot of yeah, you just do it. And then like an I is like influence, and it's more like direct. I, I I'm like honestly bad at explaining it, but then like C and S are like somewhere like more detail oriented and like. Gotcha. Basically, why I bring that up is because I didn't learn that like that until I was in real estate. And if I knew how to identify what people were by their actions as a waitress, I probably would have also even been better that way. I mean, I I use that in life now, understanding how people are changes the way that I speak to them. Mm -hmm. Um, But that's why I brought that up. But we we can focus that on on, a later date. Did you, were you always with Keller? Did you go somewhere else? No, you know what? I started um, with Remax Mm -hmm. and it was on Tioga and Aramingo, and that was Steve Ochevsky's yeah. brokerage. And Chris Summers mm-hmm. was in the office with Stephanie, and, and I was on a team. Um, but, again, I still had my foot in the uh, hospitality industry. I was still bartending. I had a mortgage. I mean, I bought my first house when I was 23. So, like, you know, my team leader was putting me on appointments at, like, 9 o'clock in the morning. I'm like, you realize I just got home at 4, right? Yeah. I'm like, like I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm like, I still got boogers in my eyes. I'm like, I'm not – you know, she's, oh, you're unreliable. But so anyway, short, short, uh, short yeah, story, yeah. story. I, I left there. I went to Weikert. Mike Dumphy uh, closed down his place on 19th of Walnut. Mm-hmm. We were forced to go to Long of Foster with uh, Don Saganic. Okay. From there, I did a stint with City Space, who's now Space and Company. Space Company. I, I was still like not fully submerged in real estate. So I kind of put my my yeah. license in escrow. And then, you know, I was approached by um, another broker with my Philly Realty, which is a bo- like a boutique firm, yeah. which is great because I, I kind of like started getting back into it um, and it did really well. And then he decided he didn't want to be a broker anymore. And he was trying to go back to another uh, brokerage. Again, he was trying to go to Long Foster and I was like, I'm not doing it. Yeah, I did a little stint with Copper Hill. And um, these city agents just, Go to whatever's on the end know, of the we're, block. We're, we're like prostitutes. You just walk out of one company and you're like, oh, <laughs> like I don't like what's going on here. Much, I'm just going to go to the end of the street and negotiate another monthly uh, payment. How much you paying? <laughs> yeah. I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> literally. Meet, meet me in the back. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bring the documents. That's literally how it works. I, so I started in the suburbs. I was waitress. I was in college, left school, got my license, went to, um, knew someone at Keller Williams in Langhorn. Talked to the broker there, did a bunch of stuff. Took me a very long time to get licensed. That's nor here nor there. Um, <laughs> however, I was at KW Newtown in Bucks County for the first two and a half years, almost more of my career. And it's just so different. Like the process of like leaving a brokerage in the suburbs is so different than like people just don't do that as often. Where I feel like agents in the city are just like, eh. They just jump ship when they just feel like it. I know, but a lot of it has to do with, um, you know, people recruiting. I mean, I got phone calls all the time and that's how I, well, actually I ended up going to Keller Williams because I did a deal with Jerry Wells in Elkins Park (laughs) and Jerry's like, you know, Hey, why don't you come over? I was like, (laughs) he's great. I I was like, Hey, he's like, why don't you come over? Keller's like, I don't know, man. I was like, you know, kind of happy here. He's like, you're going to come over. So is Jerry your sponsor? <laughs> Jerry's my sponsor. Oh, we're going to have Jerry Wells on the podcast oh, yeah, next. Absolutely. I uh, wish he was here right now. <laughs> well, I saw him in softball. You missed it. No, I came to the happy hour afterwards and uh, you were gone. Well, so Crazy. I came. Are you coming? Where is it at? Where are you going to be? I, oh, God, I, isn't there when I show I up. I came with one of my team members and he was not into it. And he's like, I'm going to Uber back. I was like, I can't let you Uber the back. The one that's my age? Or Brandon, a little older than me? Brandon, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's a rock star. Brandon yeah. Swagger. Name yeah. drops him. He's yeah, how many months? Did you hear that? Like Brandon Swagger. Oh, dude, it's fucking hot, right? Swagger. <laughs> Swagger. He sounds like a rock star. He looks like, like a rock ladies star. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Brandon Swagger. <laughs> he looks like a rock star. Where'd you find him? Uh, he's Andrew's friend. Oh. Yeah. I didn't. I thought Andrew, Andrew was him friends with him because of you. No, I didn't realize gifted, it was the other way around. Yeah. Long story short, um, you know, Brand. I talked to Brandon Hawkins who now is at KW Township. Another fan favorite. Right. And so, you know, I was like, bro, listen, I was like, if you want me to come over here, I was like, I need this, 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 and this. I don't want to tell you what I told him, but yeah. he's like, whatever you want. I was like, wait, I could see Brandon be like, he's we like, can do that. <laughs> whatever you want. And like super calm too. Like, I want season tickets to the Sixers. I want a Ferrari. <laughs> and I was like, 
This episode is brought to you by Castle Public Adjusters. If you have fallen victim to property damage, Castle Public Adjusters is your first and only call to make. They will make sure that you get the maximum compensation for your property loss. And remember, avoid the hassle. Just call Castle. 215-752-1237. Yeah, I just wanted to say that you you come off as a seasoned agent. Thanks. Yeah, mature agent. Thanks. So I think the the other thing that... (laughs) You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> so uh, the, the most important thing, though, that I, I really asked and I wanted to do that Brandon, you know, did as much as he did before he moved over, did his jump, and then uh, was that I was like, I want to start a team. And that basically yeah. was like, I want to I want to move my – I want to take my career to the next level. And if I'm coming here, I need to know that's going to happen because I don't want to switch again. This is the final – so now I'm going into my fourth year – and every year I've doubled my numbers, yeah. right? So, That's I mean, amazing. I think I think this year is going to be a little bit more challenging because of the market shift, but, you know, we're tenacious. We're not going to give up. We're going to keep, you know, trying to get, get everything done. And so what's the team breakdown now? As far as? Your team. I, there's four of us. Okay. So we have uh, Brandon, mm-hmm. Melanie, and Kelly. And Kelly's doing well, too. She did two deals. Um, she's out. It's great. She relocated to Berks County. Okay. So now I'm... Setting Expanding, myself, basically. Yeah, I'm setting yeah. up. I'm, I'm getting leads for Berks County. Yeah. And then she can do also the northern part of Montgomery County, you know, and, you know, lower and all that stuff. Do so. you meet once a week or what's like? We try to meet. We try to meet every two weeks. Um, and I try to make sure that my team's present at the, you know, brokerage meeting. Mm-hmm. Um, it's difficult. They have a lot of different schedule. Melanie's yeah. still, you know, in college. Okay. Um, but, you know, she's she's into it. You know, yeah. So. Um, when you switched to Keller Williams, were you still in the restaurant industry or in service industry? No. Like you were full-time real estate at that yeah, point? Yeah, I, I left everything in 2013. Okay. You know? Okay. I had my one one foot in the door being a, a, a catering chef, which mm-hmm. paid really well, but, you know, I was like, I asked for my, my last increase, and they were like, no, and I said, thank you. You helped me make the decision for Thank me. Thank you. <laughs> You just made this so much easier yeah. for me. Yeah. I actually left. So I only was in real estate and the restaurant industry for six months at the same time. So I left like a week before the world shut down mm-hmm. and I've been full time since. So that was like February, 2020. Um, but I closed two deals from the restaurant. Yeah, no, it's a like, great network. It's, it's great my, for networking. one of my favorite sphere of influences that yeah. I still tap into. My only, to get agents and to get business. My only complaint about the restaurant industry is that it, it, it takes your life. And yeah, not only your no life, life, it steals your soul. Like, especially if you are an owner or you're hands-on chef or yeah. manager. It's not a life by design at yeah, all. Yeah, no. The, the, the hours su- no. suck. I remember one time I was I was doing a dinner shift and it was raining outside and I just didn't want to be there. And I just was over it at that point. And I was standing at the back doors and it was like a glass window back door. And I just like looking out at the rain and I was like, I wish my dad could come and just sign me out. Like this was school. (laughs) Like I literally felt like I was in jail. And I remember this is, I had my license and I was like, I'm, I can't wait to never do this ever again. And like, (laughs) I'll joke like, oh, I wish I could just get a bar shift real quick and like make a quick two, 300 bucks or 400 bucks, whatever it is, like the hustle and the cash and like all that stuff. Like I joke around that I miss it, but in reality, the idea of having to clock in or someone telling me I have to be somewhere makes my skin crawl. Like I get like that about open houses sometimes. Like sometimes I'll like think about, oh, I have to stay in this place for three hours, hours or whatever it is. And I'm not allowed to leave. And I'm like, I actually hate this. Yeah, I just want to touch on the actual. <laughs> having Tom's to, laughing at so me. You, so you, so you're a psychopath. So basically, you're a new agent, and this is all for the new agents out there. They're getting yeah. like, I'm going to get my real estate license, and I'm going to make tons of money. And really, what happens is, unless you move, unless you join a team, and they're feeding you, being a solo agent is really difficult. And and what's going to yeah. have to happen is you're going to have to keep some kind of side job, which is going to take you away from being a full-time realtor. Totally. And, you know, it's it's basically a handicap because I, I had a question yesterday. She's like, um, you know, my client's like, well, so what do you do? I was like, I do this full-time. I was like, I eat, sleep, and shit, real estate. That's what I do. She's like, that's awesome. You know, like, I'm not going to, like, not be available for you. Yeah. If you call me and I can't answer, I'll text something. I'll call you right back. Yeah. You know, I mean, if you, you have to do it, you have to do it. You know, 
but yeah, it, I, it's it, totally my life now. Yeah. But I don't hate it. No, no. Like I like it that it's my life. And speaking of that, like that you're full time and like eat, breathe, whatever it. Mm-hmm. One um one thing that I uh I've been implementing in my business in the past year to like protect my time and my time block and my life is I will set the expectation in the beginning of an appointment, like, hey, I'm not going to answer the phone past 930, whatever it is, whatever I tell them. But if you're up scrolling in your bed or you think of a question or whatever the case may be and it's past that time, like, don't, like, not text me or whatever because you don't want to, like, bother me. Just text me and I'll answer it the next day. Right. And that's, like, whenever I say that, I've never had a client complain that they couldn't get to me or whatever the case is. And it's, like, basically, like, creating, like, your own admin system because now I have these, like, unread texts that I can just one by one go down when it's my time to go back and do that. But setting the expectation of that and still acting as if like you're 24 seven and you're, this is your life is still like possible to have a good life, even if that's what you do all the time. Yeah. No, you just have to put that in place. And, and it's invaluable to, you know, it's about speed, right? Yeah. Like real estate is about speed, especially when you're getting a lead in, you know, my, my thing is this is like when I speak to a, a client, a potential buyer, I'm like, hey, listen, I was like, we're a one-stop shop. It's not just me. You're getting four agents. I have a title company. I have a mortgage partner. I got inspectors. So we, you don't need to look any further. We're ready to rock and roll. Like, I can have you pre-approved, and we can go shopping tomorrow, right? Like, that's it. Like, yeah. there's no, like, oh, well, um, you, uh, no. it's, by it's, that, you're it's, done. As soon as they hear the mm and the ah, uh, like, and the hesitation, they're like, you're not the guy I want to work with. Yeah. Like I'm you like, have to hey, just listen, provide everything. I, I, I got this for you. Like I can have you in the house in 60 days, maybe less. Yeah. They're like, wait, what? 60 days? I'm like, yeah. Yeah. I'm like I was like, if you're paying cash, we can have you in 30. <laughs> I think like, that's why I feel like <laughs> you and I align in that like personality wise too, because we just want to give them like, this is what you want to do. This is what I'm going to provide. And you don't have to worry about anything. I'm literally going to handle A through Z. Like, just let me know what you want and what you need. Mm-hmm. And I'll handle it. And I, do- I, I like doing that for people. Like I find fulfillment knowing that when the, they sign the papers at the end of the deal and we're at the table and they go, Jewel, you made this so easy. Like, I yeah. feel like this was the easiest thing ever. And I'm like, yeah, it was. I handled all the stress myself. <laughs> all right the stre- here. <laughs> all the stress. You Everything the, that was stressful, the, I did it. <laughs> the realtor hat on, the therapist hat on, the firefighter hat on, like, because, you know, like, hey. Fixing things, unclogging dish, like dishwashers. <laughs> I have a tool belt in my trunk. <laughs> No. Like <laughs> anything we need to do to get the deal done is going to get done. We had this deal where, you know, this guy had child support and he had paid it off in August. And the underwriter was like, um, you know, we need this paper. I said, we already submitted this paper. Well, now the title company saying, listen, we'll take this. My manager said, we'll take it. We'll take the $900 out of escrow off. And they're like, no, we need the original order. I said, do you want us to go in the basement of City Hall and get it for you? I'm like, how are we going to get the original order? So, like, you know, we literally went down and got a copy at City Hall. Like, this is the stuff that we, yeah. like, go, because. But some people might just let it blow up and yeah, just no, be like, it's I, not my problem because I didn't, you I, didn't cause that issue. I, it wasn't I, your I fault, it, but, at the end but of you the, handled at it. At the end of the day, you have multiple parties that are going to, are going to be affected by this, right? Yeah. The buyer, the seller, the loan officer, the agents, right? I mean, like, we, and that's what I'm saying. It's like, you know, again, another, another con, right? We don't get paid by the hour. Right. Like if we don't close the deal, we don't get paid. Like, you know, Wait, like, I'm we, like <laughs> this, this is my, this is what I really want to talk about. Like just the payment stuff in general, do you know that on the buy side, I, no one ever like thinks about it this way, but as a buyer's agent, right. I want to, I want my clients to pay the least amount of money. Cause in our, um, in our eyes, like the smaller, the payment, the better, the deal. Right now. I don't believe that that's true because it's not always about the amount of money. There's other things that come involved with whatever. But generally speaking, like, how do I get exactly what I want for the least amount of money? Well, I literally bust my ass trying to do that for my clients to make less money because I get paid off of the percentage of the purchase amount. Right, of course. So yeah. I am, am literally out here striving to be the best that I can be to get a lower price so I can make less money. It's almost if I was shittier at my job and had my clients pay more money, I would make more money. And you know what's crazy about that? Right. I don't even think about it. It doesn't even cross my mind once to be shitty to get more money. Like I'm literally just like, it's like a volume for me. Right. And it's, there's other fulfillment and like I'm not a shitty human being, but you literally are fighting hard yeah, to make you, less money. I mean, because I know because How if you're not fucked up in I, the head is that like at, at the end of the day, you'll be doing the service to your client. But number one, it's like at some point, 
you know, when you've done so many deals and you get past all the process and then at the end you see them at the, at the closing table and they're like, it's like a grin from ear to ear and yeah. they're like, I love it. Thank you so much. I mean, that is worth, it's, it's priceless, right? Like, you know, like you helped somebody find their dream home. I love you know? it. And a couple of times I've gotten people, houses off market. A, a friend of yeah. mine, Josh and Becky, you know, I put it up on the uh, KW when we had the off market thing and then it mm-hmm. got shut down for <clears throat> Drew Shields from another KW. He's like, hey man, I got this place in Glen Mills for 700,000. It's off market. And I'm like, hey, let's go check it out. Yeah. Next thing you know, acre in the front, acre in the back, you know, yeah. beautiful home. Done. I have someone that is moving their their mother is going to be going into assisted living and it would just be a better situation if we didn't have a bunch of people coming through the house. Like she's lived in mm-hmm. it for over 40 years. Like she's not going to leave when there's doing showings and like have to be out all the time. Like it's just going to cause such a hassle. And would I, as a listing agent, want to do everything in my power to drive price so that we can all make the most money? Right. Yes. But is that their goal? Like, is their goal to make the most money or is there a goal to have peace of mind and get through this process like happily, like and without aggravation? And so that's a conversation that I have with my clients. Like I might just try to find another agent or another buyer that wants the house for a number that works for us because the thought of like having to accept and decline showings could even make us not sell because we don't have like the flexibility. And I just don't want to cause this lady like, all this like anxiety about having people walking through her house when she's going through like one of the hardest parts of life. And so like maybe somebody else might walk in there and just rush through the appointment and say, whatever, like this is what we need to do. This is how we have to do it and be forceful. And I'm like over here not to like pat myself on the back, but like I'm over here for two and a half hours, just chatting it up because like, I feel bad for this old lady. Like I I just feel guilty. Like I'm like, I don't even care. I'm like, I'll do this damn thing for free. Like I'm like, you know, it's like, so so like I'm saying, so, you know, we do a lot of sacrificing in this industry Um, and at the end, you know, it pays off because the referrals come, right? Like, so, Hey, I might not have made that much money on this commission, but I did such a good job for this client that I know that she's going to be like, and then your phone rings like, Hey, by the way, um, you know, you helped in Asia and Clarence. And I'm like, yeah, it's like, I'm her cousin. I'm like, Oh, cool. Yeah. And then, you know, you got another client. Yeah. Um, what, um, how many times have you, um, had to throw in your, throw your own money into your own commission into a deal? (laughs) Okay. So. (laughs) <laughs> it's confidential. <laughs> Is it? I would you say just give I, me would a number. Say, I would say at least, uh, you know, half a dozen to a dozen times. Now, now counting just recently, I did a deal in Lethgal, um, and it was FHA, Lethgal, um, Fourth and Lethgal. Okay. Um, I thought you meant like a city. I'm like, I've never yeah, heard of that. Lethgal Street. Keep going. North <laughs> Lethgal Street. Uh, you know, we've already passed the whole inspection and contingency stays and repairs and credits and all that stuff. The the buyer by his own fault had to go from conventional to FHA. Mm-hmm. So when the FHA appraiser came in, he's like, "Hey, you know, are you aware that you need to make these cars? Like, it's not. We're not doing it. Yeah. Buyer's gonna do it. He had to switch to FHA. But he's gonna. So he didn't have. A, he barely had enough money. Yeah. And he was getting. He was getting two grants. He was getting a city Philadelphia grant, and he was getting the Urban League grant, twelve thousand five hundred grant, and he still didn't have enough so money. So what did you do? So it was we, I sent out. I told her. I said, "Do you want me to send a handyman over there?" And she's like, send them over there. Guess the quote because they had a chip paint and around the windows. Yeah. Long story short, he capped everything at 475. She's like, well, he doesn't have it. I said, well, my, my seller's not going to pay for it. I said, but I'll tell you what. I was like, I'll split it with you. 237.50 each. You did it. We did it. Did you do it like at the table or like had no, no. you just we had did it all, all, I had all. one time, I had a lender from New York actually scream at me on the phone. Cash app. That's how we did it. That's how I did it. <laughs> I said, actually, I did Zell. I said, Zell me two hundred dollars right now, or I will literally blow this deal up. <laughs> like, but it was all the lender's fault, and and I would never do that to somebody or like talk like that or like demand money that way. But I'm telling you, this lender was the rudest person I've ever spoken to in the earth. Like, uh, at, screaming at me on the phone over something that was not my fault. Yeah. And so, on the topic of the things that people don't talk about in real estate, this is one they don't talk about how people are actually horrible yeah. and treat you like absolute dog shit. And, <laughs> like, lie, and lie right to your face. Yeah. Yeah. No. So yeah, whole, I've done it. I've oh. been in a situation where I've had to throw money into a deal. And and so the buyer's agent, she's like, I, I, she's like, I finally pulled it out of her. Right. She was, she's new. She does about 10 deals a year and she works full time for Pico. And she's like, I've never had a discount. I was like, well then you haven't been done uh, doing real estate long enough. 
I'm like, listen, I was like, this is like. I think you told me this. I, yeah. was like, I told her, I said, listen, I was like, you're, it's like you're buying a scratch off for $200, but you know, it's a $10,000 winner. It's a no brainer. Yeah. It's like, you know, like you're going to have to eat it. I'm like, like unless if, we, we're going to blow this whole deal up for what? For $475? Right. No and way. people are crazy. Like if, if, yeah, if I know I'm getting a $10,000 commission check off this, like, all right, 400 bucks, right. I got to eat it. Like yeah. there's plenty of times where I've just done things or I gift uh, like up to like a hundred dollars normally in like a closing gift. Yeah, no. And it's just all part. It's the cost of doing business. Sometimes you got to throw three grand into it. Sometimes you make so much money and it doesn't yeah. matter. Like, yeah, no. It all, it's yeah. the law of large numbers. But you the can't thing look is, at, nobody tells you that. No one yeah. tells you that you're going to get into this business for 500 bucks to get your license. And then you're going to be mixed in with a bunch of idiots <sighs> because I don't know how, but a ton of people have no idea what they're doing and they somehow are still selling real estate. And then you have to just come, you have to front so much. Yeah, no. Uh, when I when I took my real estate license at Poly Associates, right? So did I. Um, my teacher says, you know, most of the time, real, realtors don't know what they're doing. You just got to be there. If you're there, the, the deal falls on your lap, and you you don't even know what you're doing, and you still you still get the deal, and yeah. you still get paid. He's like a lot. Of, you're gonna you're gonna find a lot of realtors that don't know what they're doing. So I have in my little notes oh, for yeah, here. Let's go. I said, um, "What's your least favorite part about real estate?" <sighs> my least part. Um. Uh, I mean, there's a, there's, I there's a funny a, one. There's a couple. One, one is, is, you know, I hope you say the same thing. Clients that are not forthcoming. No, that's not what and, I was going to say. And <laughs> like, uh, you know, calling leads. Okay. Things like that. Because if you don't get business and nobody know how good you are and right. blah, blah, yeah, yeah. What's your, my least, least favorite part is reply to inspection. Oh. Okay. If I have to sit here and go over a list, a laundry list of things that are wrong with a house when you're not buying a new construction, even when you're buying a new construction, but even if it's not something that you built from scratch, like people have lived in this home, there are going to be issues. Like it's just, it happens, but it's like pulling teeth. Like, well, this is what they want. And then going back to them, that's ridiculous. Like, I'm not doing that. They need to pay, they need to give me a $20,000 credit for a hot water tank. Like oh, yeah. I'm... It makes my skin crawl. I have anxiety about doing it. It's like if I could just hire someone to just do my reply to inspections, I would be like the happiest person on earth. Like it's going to happen and I can't wait to the day that I don't have to do one ever again. Yeah. I think the way to diffuse that though is to like. Set the expectation. Yeah. Say, well, hey, that's listen. what I do primarily on the buy side. I'll be like, listen, it is not a pass or fail. Sometimes you're going to have an 11 page report. Sometimes you're going to have a 48 page report we are going to go over this together and we'll look at it and we will decide some of the bigger ticket items that make sense for us to fight for. Right. We're not sending a laundry list. We're not going to get anywhere with it. And it's not realistic. Exactly. I set that expectation with people, but it doesn't matter. Or let's say the house is horrible. Like I had a house that had active, um, like carpenter ants in the slider back door. It had uh, termite damage and signs of active termites in the basement. It had mold in the basement. Like I'm talking a $1.6 million house in Newtown that was treated terribly. And we offered them over asking with full inspections and they didn't want to do a single thing. Mm. And they were like mad that we like, were not happy with the house. And I'm like, you do know you have a, almost a $2 million house that it's is not well actually disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> like you have been living in this. So like the, I can't blame my clients for wanting to go after like eight things cause they were all horrible. But then also on the other side, just dealing with the other agent. Well, well, why didn't the inspector say that? Because the, the agent came to the inspection. The listing agent. Did you show him the, the report? Yeah. The listing agent came to the inspection and was like trying to follow us around the whole time. Mm -hmm. And like, I don't appreciate that. Like go sit in the kitchen. If you don't trust us being here, this is not your inspection. You didn't hire them. Right, we right. hired them. So she's like, well, why wasn't all of this pointed out when I was... When I was there, because it's not your report. You didn't pay us to come. If you want the home inspected and you want to explain to you thoroughly on the spot, then you do it. Right. Like, that's not why my inspector's there. We don't have another hour and a half to walk you through the house. Like, who, well, like what do you think this is? But that stuff just makes my skin crawl. Like, I just hate dealing with it. I don't yeah, want to do it. I'm, and, you know, I let them know. I'm like, listen, the inspector's going to find things from like a leaky faucet yeah. to structural damage. Yeah. So, like, we're not going to be worried about all the little nonsense stuff, but we're going to be looking for the major you know, foundation, electric, roofing, all that stuff. That's what we're looking at, you know. 
So we're like kind of like wrapping it up. What's um what's your favorite part? Like what's like the best stuff? What's the best thing about real estate for you? I, mean, I think we already kind of talked about yeah, it a little I, bit. I think but. I think the best part is the freedom to make your own schedule. Yeah. Right? Like you Even know, though we know. work like dogs. Yeah. <laughs> I'm always I'm always in my office. But it's funny because I'm always in my office or I'm at I'm at the center city office or I'm in my home office. But yeah. I'm I'm working in my own element, right? Yeah. Like, you know, like if no I one's in take, charge of you. Yeah, if I want to take my, my laptop and sit on the couch and turn the, the sports on and I could still, you know, multitask and like, you know, yeah. That's it. So I mean that that's definitely, you know, the best part. Again, yeah. the worst part is is making sure that you have this is my worst part. The worst part is this is the worst yeah. part is <laughs> Added his own sound effects. <laughs> Got it. That was a rewind sound. If anybody was curious how we, that worked. We don't have special effects on this one. Um, but the thing is, the worst thing is about putting the pokers in the fire. Like, you know, you have to constantly yeah. be thinking about, this is 2022. I'm already thinking about the deals that are going to close in 2023. I'm already like, in 2023. Yeah, like, we're in November. The, the, I mean, well, like, and it's like, even if you're like, all right, you know what? I'm going to clean myself up. I'm going to have better habits. I'm going to do better you're still like at least 45 days out from getting paid from thinking that way. Right. Exactly. Like it doesn't, you can't just get paid tomorrow. It doesn't, nothing is able to act like that. So it's definitely stressful. And I think there's a lot of things that w they, you just don't expect when you get into this business. Yeah. What I can tell you and, you know, give some good advice to new agents. If you do make some money, save the majority of it, you know, take yeah. it, take some out for taxes. 25% of every, ch every commission check I've ever gotten has gone into a savings account. Yeah. Immediately. Pay, your, pay yourself. Yeah. Pay yourself. Like if you make five grand, give yourself 1500, put a thousand for taxes, pay your bills and just nestle it away because you know, the real estate market right now, it's, it's up and down. It's not, yeah. it's not like this. It's not like what people think it's, it's, it's like a roller coaster, you know, like, you know, it's up, it's down right now. We're like in a buyer's market. So we're here yeah. and uh, right now I'm telling all my investors to sit tight, wait for January because the prices are just going to drop. Yeah. And you're going to have, you know, it's going to be like, oh, no, no, not that one. Oh, oh, that one. Yeah, yeah, no, no, that's, that's <laughs> the one. Like, you know, like, so you're going to, you're going to pick whatever you want. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that we didn't get super negative because I was afraid the two of us here will start just complaining no, about no. stuff. And I don't no like complaints. to be a big complainer. I like to just talk about real life stuff and yeah. be realistic about things, but I don't like to moan and complain about that. Yeah, well, so I'm the glad John we didn't Alana go real estate team, real agents, real results. We don't complain. Ooh, I like so that. A little, little plug for yourself. <laughs> huh, South Philly boy. All <laughs> right. All right. Um, so that's it for today. Yeah. Now in your Instagram. My Instagram is, uh, Keller Williams, John Nolano. Okay. And, uh, that's Facebook. Long. We got to shorten that up. Uh, we'll, we'll figure it out. Okay. Uh, and uh, same thing, John Alano on um, okay. Facebook. Cool. And uh, John Alano Real Estate Team dot com okay. website. Got it. And uh, it's been a pleasure being here. And thank you. Thanks for honored coming. that you asked me to be your second guest. Yeah. Not your first, but second. Hey, yeah. Well, you know, I'll take it. I'm honestly, in the top three. I'm in the top three. Yeah. You can't win them all. I know. <laughs> so anyways, my name is Juliana Gainsburg. I appreciate you for listening or watching or however you're tuning into this. If you're interested in finding out more about me or seeing what I'm up to, my Instagram is J-U-L underscore the realtor, or you can find me on TikTok at J-U-L the realtor. Talk to you guys soon.